So in this video, we're going to work on this ballistic pendulum problem. So we have a 70 gram bullet moving east at 400 meters per second, and it strikes a 1.2 kilogram block on the right and becomes embedded in it. How high will the bullet block system rise above its original point? So here's the bullet, and the mass is 70 grams. It's moving at a speed of 400 meters per second. What do we need to do in order to calculate the height? Well, once the bullet becomes embedded to the block, the speed of the bullet block system is going to be less than 400 meters per second. We need to calculate that speed after the collision. And at that point, after the collision, energy will be conserved as the bullet block system rises to a new height. But during the collision, energy is not conserved. Because the two objects stick together, we have an inelastic collision. But after the collision, as the bullet block system rises up, the kinetic energy after the collision will be converted to potential energy. So there's a two-part process to this problem. First, we need to use conservation of momentum to find the final speed of the bullet block system after the collision, and then use conservation of energy to convert the kinetic energy of the two things, the bullet and the block, into potential energy so we could find the height. So let's start with momentum. The initial momentum of the system is equal to the final momentum during any collision if we have an isolated system. And there are no external forces acting on the system. So the initial momentum is the momentum of the bullet plus the momentum of the block. And that's going to equal the final momentum which these two, they move together at the same speed because they're sticking together. So it's going to be m1 plus m2 with the same final speed, vf. m1, which is the mass of the bullet, we need that in kilograms. So if you take 70, and if you divide it by 1,000, that's going to equal 0 0.07 kilograms. v1 is 400. m2 is 1.2, but... Initially, the block was at rest, so V2 is 0. And then M1 plus M2, that's 0 0.07 plus 1.2. So that's the total mass of 1.27 when he sticks together. And so now we can find the final speed. So it's going to be 0 0.07 times 400 divided by 1.27. So the final speed of the bullet block system is 22 point zero five meters per second. So now that we have the final speed, let's use conservation of energy to determine the maximum height attained of the bullet block system. So initially, after the collision, this object has kinetic energy. And then as it rises to its maximum height, all of the kinetic energy will be converted to potential energy. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and the potential energy is mgh. Now for the second part of the problem, the mass is not important. If we divide both sides by m, we could cancel it. So it's going to be 1 half times the square of the final speed, that's 22.05 squared, and that's going to equal gh. So 22.05 squared times 0.5 divided by 9.8. That will give you a maximum height of 24.8 meters. And so that's how high the bullet block system will rise. So now we have the same problem, but in reverse. A 50 gram bullet moving east strikes a 1.3 kilogram block on the right and becomes embedded in it. The bullet block system rises 4.5 meters above its initial point. How fast was the bullet traveling before it collided with the block? So go ahead and try this problem. So we know the bullet is going to be embedded in the block just like before. And this time, since we're given the height, we need to calculate the final speed of the bullet after the collision. And then once we have that, we could find the initial speed of the bullet. So 
So let's focus on the conservation of energy. After the collision, the bullet block system will have a kinetic energy, Ke. And as it rises up, that energy will be converted to potential energy. So 1 half mv final squared is going to be equal to mgh. And just like before, we could cancel the mass. So we have g and we have h. g is 9.8 .8 and the height is 4.5. So 9.8 .8 times 4.5, that's 44.1. So 1 half v final squared is equal to 44.1. To get rid of the 1 half, let's multiply both sides by 2. Half times 2 is 1. And 80, I mean 44.1 times 2 is 88.2. Now we need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 88.2 gives us a final speed of 9.39 meters per second. So that's the final speed of the bullet block system after the collision. So now we need to deal with momentum. So during the collision, momentum is conserved. And we could use the same formula that we used before. M1 V1, that's the momentum of the bullet before the collision, plus M2 V2, the momentum of the block. And that should equal the momentum of the bullet block system, which the mass of that system is the sum of the mass of the bullet and the block, and they move with the same final speed. So M1 is the mass of the bullet, which is 50 grams. And if we divide that by 1,000, that's 0 0.05 kilograms. Our goal is to calculate V1, which is basically the initial speed of the bullet. Now M2, V2, that's going to be 0 because the block is at rest before the bullet strikes it. The total mass is going to be 0 0.05 plus the mass of the block, which is 1.3. And the final speed we know to be 9.39 meters per second. So 0 0.05 plus 1.3, that's 1.35. And then let's multiply that by 9.39. So the final momentum is 12.6765 kilograms times meters per second. And that's equal to 0 0.05 times V1. So now let's divide both sides by 0 0.05. So the initial velocity of the bullet is 12.6765 divided by 0 0.05, which works out to be about 253.5 meters per second. So that's how you could find the velocity of the bullet if you know the height at which the bullet block system rises. Number three. A 90 gram bullet moving at 300 meters per second strikes a 1.5 kilogram block shown below. The bullet emerges from the block at a speed of 200 meters per second. How high will the block rise above its original point? So this problem is similar to the first problem. We're looking for the height again. The only difference is the bullet is no longer embedded in the block. Rather, the bullet emerges from the block. So the initial speed of the bullet is 300 meters per second. And now after the collision, the speed is reduced to 200 meters per second. So the bullet lost momentum. And the momentum that was lost by the bullet was transferred to the block. So first, we need to calculate the final speed of the block. And then we could use that to calculate the height of the block. So this is going to be the momentum of the bullet plus the momentum of the block before the collision. And then after the collision, the bullet and the block no longer have the same final speed. So we need separate quantities for the momentum of the bullet and the block. So this is going to be the momentum of the bullet after the collision. And this is going to be the momentum of the block after the collision. So the mass of the bullet is 0 0.09 kilograms and the speed is 300. The original momentum of the block is zero because it was at rest. M1 is still 0 0.09 and the velocity of the bullet is 200 after the collision. M2 is 1.5, and we now we need to find the velocity of the block. So 0 0.09 times 300 is 27, and 0 0.09 times 200 is 18. 
So 27 minus 18 is 9. And 9 divided by 1.5 is 6. So the velocity of the block after the collision is 6 meters per second. So now that we have that, we could use conservation of energy to calculate the height of the block. So we're going to set kinetic energy equal to potential energy. So 1 half mv squared is equal to mgh. So let's cancel the mass. And so this is going to be 1 half times the square of the speed, which is 6. And that's equal to g times h. So 6 squared is 36. Half of that is 18. 18 divided by 9.8 will give us a height of 1.84 meters. So that's how high the block will rise above its original point after the collision.